Hi. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an unboxing of the Starlink satellite. Me and about a dozen cats that live here apparently. And uh, we're just going to go through what's in here, what you can expect when you order it, just so that you know what's in the box. Now, I don't know what's in the box, so it'll be interesting for both of us. So, uh, let's just see. So, as you can see, uh, it's quite large, but of course, there's actually the satellite dishes in here. So, I'll just open it. Alright, so I can tell just from this picture, this is probably going to contain the dish itself. It looks like some form of modem, which uh, we definitely knew it would include. And, uh, I don't know, some type of Wi-Fi connection as well by the look of it. But let's just take this out and have a look. Alright, so what we have here, um, we have a pretty decent sized stand. This is some form of metal, uh, which is good because it's going to need a little bit of weight. We have a lot of cord here. So this cord is what actually physically connects the satellite dish outside to your modem inside. Which would be this here. So this is actually connected to the dish. So this is going to have to run in. Uh, there's a lot of talk about um, ways to get this in your house because I know not everybody is a big fan of drilling holes in your wall. But really there's not a lot of choice. Um, you could temporarily run it in through a window and then have a blanket or something filling the gaps, but that's of course a temporary solution. Some people even talk about running it in through a dryer vent, but you really can't run that in through a dryer vent. It's not meant for it. So there will need to be a drilling. But when it comes to this, uh, you before you even get this, you get an app and the app lets you determine where in your yard you're going to set this up for the best signal. It's definitely best you test it out. Not just with the app, but the actual dish to make sure that what you, you're reading was accurate before you start drilling holes. Because for me, I found out that the side of the house I wanted to put it on has absolutely no reception at all. So we're going to end up putting it on the back side. Um, so if we get the camera in here a little bit, although I am unboxing, I'm probably going to leave this in the box until I get it outside. But I wanted everybody to see roughly the size of the dish in comparison to my hand. My hand is a reference point. So this is about the same size as Bell and all that. Um, it's fairly light, 5 to 10 pounds, um, so this, in comparison, just slightly less weight. So, it's supposed to sit on the ground, though there are a lot of accessories you can have to attach it to your roof. I'm going to probably end up attaching it to a pole at some point, just so that it gets a little higher. Uh, I'm going to do some tests with the numbers, I'll show you the tests, and see what type of numbers we get when I get this outside. So how about I get this set up? show you what it looks like when it's on the ground, and then we can see what numbers I get in comparison to what I was getting with my old internet. All right, I wanted to do a quick video after the unboxing to show the setup. The setup of this satellite took about 45 seconds. Now, it's not mounted on anything, it's sitting on a board on the ground. It is recommended to be ground mounted. Uh, I do have relatively uh, good access to the sky here in terms of the tree line. Uh, Starlink itself says that this, uh, as you can see, that tree is definitely an issue, but this does have some interrupting cover. So this isn't an ideal situation. Just wanted to get it out of the box and play with it. The actual um, satellite dish just snaps into place in there. Not even screws required. Now, of course, you can screw this down, which is completely recommended once you get it in the spot you want. But if you just want to snap and play, 20 seconds. Not even a lie. So here, uh, the cord. The cord, I, this is once again temporary. Just got it running. It's got it running right up in here. And uh, I just have this keep the bugs out. And it's going on the inside. And I'll take a quick break and show you what the inside looks like. All right, so this is the other side of the window. So as you can see, it's really just like any other modem. So, clips into here, into your standard modem. There's just the power on the other side of that. Uh, so the modem then clips here, and this is your Wi-Fi. Sends out the signal. I, I couldn't imagine a simpler setup. Um, so, there it is out there. 
just sitting there. I just ran a wire in through the window. If that's what you prefer, instead of screwing a hole in your wall, you could do it. It's all set up. Next, I'll show you the speed test, uh, which I already know is leaps and bounds above what I had before. Uh, grand total setup, uh, minute. That includes the walking and the running the line. Maybe two minutes, let's be generous. Uh, including the unboxing and filming this video, it was all done in under a half an hour. So, this is hassle-free. Yeah, to get that on your roof, you're going to have to mount it. Uh, that's still only a couple of screws. But the actual satellite itself, piece of cake. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do an internet speed test before uh, the Starlink satellite. So this is a speed test with my phone uh, tethering to the computer. My phone is on a, a Bell Unlimited Data Network. Uh, which is supposed to be high speed. Now, as you can see, my average speed in the previous test while I was setting this up was 37 kilobytes a minute, which is very slow. Um, we'll restart. And I know just from experience, this number is all over the place. So, as you can see, we're going from 120 below 100. Yeah, so this is pretty abysmal. Um, this is what I usually get in the evenings when people are coming home from work. I'm sure that's just how it goes. I wouldn't say this is average. This is a little slower than normal, but 1 to 200 kilobytes a second is about what I would expect to get. Uh, just so you know, at that speed, Netflix needs to buffer frequently. Uh, downloading takes forever. You know, um, there's periods of outages even with my phone. Uh, so, yeah, so here we are again, 100. Now, the last one was 37, this one was 100. We'll do it one more time, let's be consistent. So there, even there, we got up to 500. We never did that before. Um, it's finicky, it's all over the place. Let's see if we can get an average. This one's a little better. We're still not talking about the world of truly high speed. Um, you're talking about anything under a megabyte a second is considered pretty slow in this day and age. Yeah, we're probably going to get around 3, what, 320? Oh, one last push at the end, 360. All right, so we got a couple numbers there to compare it to. We'll get Starlink set up, and then we'll show the uh, new numbers. All right, so now I'm just doing an update with the uh, Starlink set up. I wanted to just throw out a couple of numbers. The Starlink is not optimized. It's in a spot where it's frequently blocked by trees. Uh, that's not Starlink's fault. That's my fault in the setup. But regardless, I think the numbers will be consistent. Uh, the only difference is it disconnects a lot where it is. So as you can see in the last test I did, I just got 82. I'm going to run it again. Um, the speed is all over the place. But one thing that's consistent, I mean, I'm consistently getting, this is the slowest it's ever tested, 40. Uh, to compare, I was getting roughly what, 50 to 100 kilobytes a second on my phone. This is consistently what I'm getting. So it's about 100 times faster than my phone setup. Uh, and it's actually been consistent now for the last 10 minutes. That doesn't sound like a lot. It's literally only been sitting out there for 15 minutes. Uh, so if this is the speed I can expect, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what was promised. This is wonderful. Uh, I live in the boonies. Uh, it's hard to believe that internet like this can even exist out here. So this is going to be about the third test. And once again, we're always hitting about 75, 80. I did get 100 once. So looking in the 75 to 80 megabytes a second consistently range. Uh, wonderful. Uh, so no complaints. This is a genuine average Joe speed test. This isn't what you'll read on a box or in any, any guides. You're seeing it. You're seeing it over and over again, exactly what you'll get. Once again, this isn't optimized. This is sitting out in a yard uh, on a pallet. It could be a lot higher in the sky. It could, there's trees blocking it right now. Uh, but I don't think anybody should complain about a speed like that, especially if you're used to satellite. Uh, yeah, so that's it for this one. All right, guys, I'm doing another speed test. But this is because I forgot something really important in the last one. To all my gamer friends out there, I myself am a gamer, and I know the importance latency has. Uh, latency is not something you always have to worry about. When it comes to satellite, I think anybody who's ever used satellite knows exactly the problem with latency. Um, I did have a ExploreNet internet 
my latency was a uh, thousand milliseconds or two thousand milliseconds. It was insane. Um, so I'm just running another speed test here to show you uh, that important factor. Uh, I've ran a couple of tests now. As you can see in the upper right hand corner, latency is holding steady at 72 milliseconds. Come on now, for satellite, you can't complain about that. Anything under 100 for gaming is decent. It absolutely is. Uh, download speed is awesome. Upload speed, at least half of download speed, most of the time. Um, but I mean, come on now, when you get above 10 megabytes a second, does it really matter anymore? Um, download speed is holding steady. Latency is pretty good. Jitter, I'm not super knowledge about jitter. I know jitter has something to do with latency. How frequency, how frequently your latency spikes, I believe. Uh, so it looks like it's the middle of the line or slightly higher than average. But still, um, with good latency, that's fine. Uh, the test is done. So look, that's good internet, uh, good download, good upload, decent latency. Once again, we're getting 50 milliseconds is excellent gaming. 72, you're still good. You're still in the sweet spot below 100. So there it is. If you want a game with Starlink, go to it. All right. I just wanted to do a quick wrap up. Um, everything I learned today uh, to share to you real quick. If you just want to know if this is worth getting, uh, that's going to depend a little bit on what you have. If you have nothing, absolutely. Uh, it works wonderfully here for me. I mentioned a little bit earlier in my video a little inconsistency. I don't know if that was just the satellite trying to figure itself out, uh, but since I said that, it's been consistently connected, always getting at least uh, 80 megabytes a second. Uh, so, I mean, compared to the 50 kilobytes I was getting before, that's quite impressive. Uh, it's not complicated to set up. It literally just snaps into its stand uh, that it sits on and it points itself at the sky. You don't even have to control that. It does what it needs to do. Uh, it took a minute to set up running the wires in. Uh, anybody who's had internet before and knows how to run ethernet wires all over the place, uh, there's nothing to that. Uh, the speed is good. Uh, the shipping was fast. I live in Canada, Nova Scotia. You probably never heard of it unless you're from here. And this came from the States and it got here in three days. So I don't know how they did it, but it was quick. Uh, the longest part of the whole process is waiting out the beta access. Um, if you're already past that or you're thinking about just setting up, go for it. Um, the speed is what they promised, so that's impressive. Anyway, that was my quick review. Uh, I endorse this as much as any country folk would. Uh, this isn't your standard satellite. Uh, it's actually a little faster.